Monitoring is one of the things that separates professional system administrators from the amateurs. If you want to do this professionally or you want to do it with professional quality, monitoring is a huge part of the equation. It's all perfectly fine to research, plan, configure, and maintain a system, but monitoring is what gives you insight into what's happening, what could soon be happening, how usage patterns correspond to what your machine is doing, and it can help you do things like plan for growth, scale, and more. We're going to take a look at monitoring by setting up Monit, which is a small but very capable monitoring program. We're going to monitor system stats and application stats. So on our system, we're gonna monitor CPU. Since we're running Nginx, we're gonna monitor port 80, make sure that some HTTP is being returned there. We're also gonna monitor port 3306 on localhost, that's MySQL. Now that's a TCP port, and our applications are actually using Unix sockets, but it's okay because if MySQL is running, we're gonna be listening on localhost on 3306. We're not exposing that port to the outside, which is good for security, but we can still use that to check from our local machine, that is the server, to make sure MySQL's up and responding the way we expect it to. This will also let us track MySQL's memory usage. We'll also track PHP, FPM, and Nginx processes and some details about them. And then we're gonna have site-specific monitoring config files in their own little directory. This is essentially the same as what we did with Nginx. So you'll have your main etc monit rc file, which has system-wide monitoring. And then you'll have for each website, a separate website monitoring config in etc monit monit.d and then the site name .cfg. And that allows you to make creating the monitoring file part of creating a new website. It's really useful once you start automating this process. You know, oh, I just need to set up an Nginx config, a PHP FPM pool config, the actual website files, a user for that website, a monitoring file. It just becomes one more thing that you drop into your automation scripts. So let's just jump right into the practical part and get this set up. So if you didn't install Monit at the beginning, do an apt-get update and then an apt-get install monit. However, we've already got monit installed, so we don't need to do this. If you haven't enabled it, that is enabled using systemctl to run monit at boot, do that now, but it should already be enabled. And if it's not started yet, go ahead and start that service now. So let's go ahead and edit the main monit config file, which is etc monit monit rc as you're probably already used to with config files you've got plenty of commented out lines here that neatly explain how all of this works the uncommented lines are live hash is a comment here let's have a look at what's going on here the first uncommented line is set daemon 120 and that means that the daemon the service that's running, the monit process, will check everything in the config file every two minutes. That's 120 seconds. We have a log file here, set log file var log monit.log. Perfectly fine. This default PID file is fine. And you don't need to worry about ID and state files. There's some other configuration details here. Feel free to read through them. What we're going to do, as usual, is move this, that is rename it to a ridge, and then create a file that just has our monit details inside. So let's go ahead and go to etc monit move monit rc to monit rc a ridge and create a new monit rc file. I'm going to paste the configuration file content into this config file and we'll go through it. So instead of every two minutes, we're gonna check every 30 seconds. You can set this to whatever you'd like. Obviously setting this to more often will produce a little bit more load on your server. We're configuring email alerts, which you do by 
writing set space alert space the email address you would like. Email alerts will go to this address by default now. You can have multiple email addresses be the recipient by simply adding more set alert statements here. You can also add set alert statements to individual check blocks. For example, this check MySQL block. If I added down here another set alert some email address, yeah, if I could line that up, it'd be a little nicer. Well then, the email address that would be alerted for this check specifically would be that alternate address. So for example, if you've got a database administrator, you could put you know db admin at your company down here at the end of the check block. So that's it for emails. This set httpd block is the monet http daemon. That is monet's web interface. We're going to run it on the default port of 2812. We're going to use address localhost, which means this is not an internet routable address and it's not going to be something that allows people from across the net to check out your monet stats. We don't want that. Monitoring stats are private. The allow statement lets you set a password and username for people that are trying to view your monitoring stats. So even if the request is coming from localhost from the server, it'll only be allowed if you have this allow statement here, allow a username and some password you like. So we'll call this, in my case, Dave, and we'll just add some random stuff here. I'm not trying to demonstrate a secure password, I'm just using this as a placeholder. This is where the monitoring actually begins. We're checking MySQL. So we'll check host MySQL DB with address. It's our local host. It's the same host that we're on. If we can't ping that thing, then send an alert. If we check port 3306 and try to connect using the protocol MySQL alert, if that doesn't work, right? So this can actually speak the MySQL protocol enough to connect on port 3306 and ask, hey, MySQL, are you up and running? And if MySQL is down or freaking out or having some kind of problem, then this simply will not happen and we'll get an alert. Nginx, let's check Nginx. So it's a process that we're checking. Up here, I just demonstrated the host check, even though the host is our same server. This is useful because you can simply substitute another IP address if you split out your database into a separate server. So for Nginx, we're simply checking a process that's running. We're calling it Nginx. That process is running with a PID file. The process ID file is at var run nginx.pid, totally default. We're also defining start and stop commands because if there's a problem, you can actually have Monit automatically run things like start, stop, or restart. And when we check PHP FPM, it's another process check. We're checking the PID file over here. If PHP FPM is using more than 50% of our CPU for two cycles, that is two monitoring cycles. In our case, that's one minute because we've defined it as 30 seconds. Then it'll alert. Likewise, if memory is above 400 megs, then alert. Let's make it 800. And finally, the include directive, we're simply saying include all config files that are in etc slash monit slash monitrc.d slash any file name .cfg. So we can go ahead and save this now. And now we can create our first monitoring file for a specific site. So we'll go to etc monit, monitrc.d directory. You can see there's a couple things actually already in here. What we're gonna do is create one called tutorial Linux And I'll prefix it with site so that when you list this out and you've got 50 sites, you can find all your sites right away. I'm going to paste the config file text here for our site specific monitoring file. And we're just doing a couple of checks here just to demonstrate. You'll come up with your own things that you'd like to know about. I'm just giving you some defaults here. We're going to check our host, our domain name.com with address, our domain name.com. We'll call the site test tutorial Linux with address 
test tutorial linux.com and I forgot a space and what we do the check itself is port 80 speaking the protocol HTTP if it's not responding for two cycles in our case one minute then we alert we're also going to check our nginx error log at varlog nginx underscore error dot log if that file is getting huge we're going to exec log rotate this is the absolute path the full path over to log rotate which is a program that will simply rotate our logs it compresses old logs and renames logs so this would force a log rotation this is just an example of what you can do so go ahead and save this okay it's time to reload our monet service but before we do that there's actually one problem and that is let's see if you can find it can you see it the monet rc file requires specific privileges you need 600 six that is read write for owner zero nothing for group and other so 600 this one has 644 permissions so what we're just quickly going to do change permission to 600 and that's so that any unprivileged user can't just read this out and get our username and password for the web server so chmod 600 your main monet rc file just in case i'm going to quickly check etc monet monet rc d what do we have here no none of these contain dangerous information potentially because they all just contain what you want to monitor so although they're readable they don't need to be hidden from other users system ctl restart monet you could reload it if you wanted and let's just say wget localhost i think it's 2812 let's have a quick look and that's exactly what we expect so we just confirmed that the web server is actually listening now on port 2812 we haven't been authorized because we didn't supply a username and password just checking here you can see that we're running locally that is not on the internet it's not bound to all of our addresses this is just bound to localhost 2812 you can see these 0000s these mean that this port is visible from the internet the 127001 means that it's just visible from localhost this is the ip address for localhost so now we've got a problem we want to look at this but we can only access it from our server how are we going to do it well there's a really really neat thing called ssh local forwarding and i'm going to show you the command and then walk you through what's going on in just a moment 